In this part, we're going to learn about regression. In part two, we saw regression and classification, and we focused exclusively on classification. In this section, we're going to learn about regression. Regression is the other major category of ways that you can represent data to a neural network. Regression is all about the output of a function. It's function output. Now I drew f of x, but it's not really just x. It's going to be all of the input neurons that are coming into the neural network, or support vector machine for that matter. This data formatting works for either side of that fence. What we're going to do is present data to the neural network, and instead of giving us a group that something's in, the neural network is going to give us back an actual number. Therefore, the neural network is going to have input neurons equal to the number of parameters that it's going to base the output on, and usually just a single output. As opposed to classification, where you had one output for each of the groups that it might be classified into, and the output with the highest number was the group. Three examples of regression are the, well, first of all, is just the XOR that we saw before, the exclusive OR. Second is an example that I have on my website, which is miles per gallon. This is also in the NCOG download. But you will give the neural network parameters about a car that tells it the displacement, the amount of power that the car has, so on and so forth, and it will tell you the approximate miles per gallon for the car. A third category is prediction. Prediction is often used where you want to feed the neural network historical data, and it will attempt to predict future direction of whatever the data has come from. This is often used for the stock market and other securities, where you will feed the neural network a variety of predictor indicators, and it will attempt to tell you something about the future. We're actually going to discuss this in an entire section so that you can see exactly how you represent data for this, because it's a little more complicated than the other two. XOR and miles per gallon, you're simply giving the neural network parameters and you're expecting to get the um, you're expecting to get a number back from the neural network that would be the function output. We're going to look at an example of this. We're going to see how we would actually structure this for the miles per gallon example. What you've got to do is normalize the data. So how we saw to normalize the data before was simply to divide it by one. That's one approach, um, or actually to take the reciprocal, to take one divided by that number. We're going to see um, how we can extend that to do for the miles per gallon. So the miles per gallon is going to be some number that's going to come back from the neural network that is going to tell us how many miles per gallon the neural network thought that the car was going to have. We have to come up with a reasonable range for the miles per gallon. We're going to decide that the miles per gallon is going to be 0 through 100. A car would have to be really, really bad to get 0 miles per gallon, although I suppose it might be possible in certain um, certain construction vehicles where the miles per gallon is actually less than one. It certainly can't go below zero. 
The 100 range, I don't know of any vehicles that are exceeding this. Maybe in scientific labs they have in certain rare cases where it does exceed 100 miles per gallon. But this is a good range. So we're going to look at this as sort of a percent. So the output from the neural network is going to be from 0 to 1. And whatever percent of that 100 miles per gallon is will let us know truly what the what the amount is. So for example, if the neural network had returned 0 0.25, that would be 25% or 25 miles per gallon. Now because I made the range 0 to 100, it's pretty easy to just visually look at that and say, oh yeah, 0 0.25 is going to be 25 miles per gallon. But this is not always the case. The range of your output that you're trying to factor the, the output from the neural network into is not always something really nice like 0 to 100. In fact, if, if we look at one example that's included with NCOG, it is the, it's where we're trying to predict tree types for input data. The input data does not fall into nice ranges like this. The minimum is not always zero. It depends. It's the elevation because we are dealing with trees in the mountains. Therefore, the lower range of the elevation is not zero because it is usually something much higher. Well, that's the output, the one output neuron. Let's look at how we would represent the input to this, for one particular car anyway. Let's say that this car, well, first of all, let's look at what data we want for the car. We are going to have, inside of this neural network, the input neurons are going to represent the horsepower, the weight, and then that is going to attempt to predict the miles per gallon. Now the real example that I have on the website and on the NCOG examples is takes in quite a bit more data than this. I think there's about six or seven, maybe more, input criteria for the automobile. But just for simplicity, we're going to just look at how we would represent these, two, these three items of data, two inputs and one output. Well, for this car, the horsepower is going to be 200. The weight is going to be 2,500 and the miles per gallon is going to be 25. We do just like before. This is going to get these into the acceptable range, the range between 0 and 1. And this is going to form input 1, input 2, and output 1. Now, of course, you're going to want to actually do those divisions and present these numbers to the neural network. Now, this is just one training case. You would put in many more cars so that the neural network would be trained for to figure out the relationships between these inputs and the output. Now, what's really powerful about the neural network is, say you trained it for 100 cars you could now put in a car that the neural network had never seen before and hopefully if the car was similar to the other cars in how it was created, internal combustion engine and so on, the neural network should be able to give you a fairly close approximation of what the miles per gallon actually would give an input that it has never seen before. That's the real power of the neural network. You give it data that you know and it learns from that and then new data that it's never seen before it should be able to work with as well. In the next presentation we'll look at how to represent data for prediction.